Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we are here at the final week of our Mission Possible series, which has been powerful and amazing. Yeah. Again, as Julia said, you can go to Sermon.net, you can go to YouTube uh, or iTunes to catch up on the series. And what we've been talking about, what we've been doing is taking the mission and purpose of Celebration Spiritual Center, taking the verbs that created our mission and purpose, awaken, celebrate, embody, ship, and serve. We've taken those words, and we're talking about how do we apply those things to our life. And so we started out looking at awaken and recognizing that we need to have a God experience. That in order to awaken ourselves to the presence of God in and all around us, we have to understand that everything that is present in our life right now is a God experience. Waking us up to the truth that God is always here. And then in the second week, we took that word celebrate and we talked about evolving worship, that Ernest Holmes challenges us and says that an evolved soul is a worshiper of God. And so we use this gift, this power of worship that we have to celebrate, to shake off whatever is going on in our lives. James Brown said, get up off of that yeah, thing and man. dance till you feel better. <laughs> get up off of that thing and try to release some pressure. And then last week, we talked about creating a new normal. Pastor Yolanda brought a powerful yeah. message. Creating a new normal and using those three powers that we have. What are the three powers? Surrender, forgiveness, choice. choice. Oh my God. And so here in our final week, we're going to use the last two words. We're going to use equip and serve. And then to talk about this idea, set yourself up to win. Which is one of my favorite things to say. I say it all the time. That's the line can And when I talk about setting yourself up to win, what I'm talking about is the way in which we live our lives. I think culturally, we have a thing going on where we feel like it's, it's um, noble or spiritual or we're somehow seeing good if we're taking on a thousand things, right? Mm -hmm. That if you don't, you know, if you're not doing 10 million things at once, you're not really, you know, doing well in, in life. And you see other people who seem to be doing a thousand other things, it's like, oh, well, if they're doing a thousand things, I have to do a thousand things. Now, of course, what they don't tell you is that they're also depressed and overwhelmed and can't handle a thousand things. But out there in the world, they look like they're doing it all and, and winning at life, right? So I always say, set yourself up to win. You know, make it easy for yourself. You know, it could be something simple like if you go to a restaurant and you're starving. Maybe this is the first meal you're eating all day. And so you want to order everything on the menu. You can, but you may not eat it all. Just order one thing first. Start out with the salad. You know, if you're still hungry, then order an entree. If you're still hungry, then order dessert. But don't order everything all at once. Set yourself up to win. <laughs> My grandmother used to say it this way. She used to say, start out like you can hold out. So the idea was that where you start, just start with what you know you can do. Set yourself up to win. And so that phrase came to me as I was thinking about these words, equip and serve. You know, in, in our, our mission and purpose, it says that we are here to equip humanity to live their greatest lives and to serve all creation, which are again, beautiful words. And I, I love our mission and purpose statement. It's beautiful. But what does that have to do with my individual life? How do I apply that to what I'm actually doing and how I'm actually living? And what I began to think about as we talk about this idea of setting yourself up to win, I said, well, what does winning look like spiritually? What, what is that, right? You know, I, I, last night I was reminded of Charlie Sheen. You know, that whole idea of winning kind of became that phrase, you know. But again, his idea of winning was actually failing because he, as, as much, you know, disaster and, and despair that was going on in his life, and he's still like, winning, winning, you know, which is how many of us do in our lives. We, we put on this, this facade that we're winning. But I'm interested in what does winning really look like in the spiritual way. And so I took this word equip and I said, well, what is that about, right? Equip ourselves to reveal our greatest lives. So immediately I began to think of the idea of it's about getting knowledge, it's about reading, it's about understanding, that in order to live a spiritual life, we have to have an understanding. We have to, you know, maybe read some books, we come to church, we, you know, we, we pray, we um, do all of these things. We may talk to, to other people who we feel have more knowledge than us, and we can be our mentors. And that's important. And so it immediately actually took me to the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs is a wisdom book. Um, I, I've used the book of Psalms many times, which is also a wisdom book. And um, these texts are very beautiful and very foundational, I think, to even what we're doing and where we are in the earth right now, that we need wisdom and knowledge in order to move forward in our lives. And so 
This verse in the book of Proverbs was very key to me. And it's Proverbs 4, verses 5 through 9. Get wisdom. Get insight. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will keep you. Love her, and she will guide you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, and whenever, whatever else you get, get insight. Prize her highly, and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a fair garland, and she will bestow on you a beautiful crown. Now, one thing that's interesting, I don't know if you noticed, I said a bunch of she's and a bunch of hers, but I was reading from the Bible. Did y'all catch that? Right? What's beautiful about this, and it's right there in the text that we don't know or see and nobody talks about it, the divine feminine is always spoken about. Wisdom is always spoken about as female. And this is why I talk about the divine feminine all the time. This is why I talk about the power of that feminine principle that dwells within us. Wisdom and insight is the female principle within all of us. And this is something that is important if we're going to win at life, that we must equip ourselves and love and, and love and not forsake the feminine, love and not forsake the wisdom that's within us. And so I began to think, it says, get wisdom, get insight. And another word came to me, which is not really a real word, but inner standing. Mm -hmm. We have the idea of understanding, that I understand something and now that becomes the foundation from which I can make a decision or make a choice or walk in the world. But inner standing, as we have insight, we begin to see within ourselves what is true, but then that inner standing, understanding within ourselves what is true. And so in equipping ourselves, we must have the insight and the inner standing. And as I began to think about that, and I said, well, right, this is true, right? We must equip ourselves with knowledge, insight, wisdom, understanding. Guard her, and she won't forsake you. It's a beautiful passage, and I invite you to read it, and you can read the whole, that whole chapter of Proverbs 4. It's beautiful. Um, it's, it's instructions from a father to a son, from a mother to a son, to, to how we should live in the world. But I began to think about the spiritual world and, and so-called spiritual folks that we may call ourselves to be. And I recognize that, you know what, we actually already have this wisdom and understanding. We already have this insight and understanding. And what I actually believe is that we're guilty of something. This is not a shame or blame message, but we are guilty of something. I believe that many of us are what I would call spiritual hoarders. <laughs> See, we actually have a lot of knowledge and wisdom. Our libraries are full. We have every Eckhart Tolle book. <laughs> We've read Ayala Van Zandt 10 or 20,000 times. We make sure we catch Oprah's Super Soul Sunday faithfully every week. We post powerful quotes and pictures on Instagram and Facebook, and we tweet, you know, something from Buddha that was nice with a little lotus flower next to it. We have all of this knowledge and wisdom and understanding and insight. But what's interesting to me is that that's all we have. And so how is that different than when we watch the show Hoarders and we look at those people in dismay and say, oh my God, how could they have all of those things in their house? And oh my God, what's wrong with them? And I'm so glad that's not me. Well, our hoarding may look a little different. Our hoarding looks like, you know, uh, being subscribed to every mailing list, Deepak Chopra, you know, Louise Hay, Marianne Williamson, all of these people that we know and love and we read and it's beautiful and it's powerful. But we're just holding on to this information, hoarding this information. So then that takes me to the next word, serve. Serve all creation. I remember for me, it was about four years ago, I was at a church that many of us know called Sacred Center. Um, I had just started going to Sacred Center um, in March of that year, 2009. And, um, so many different things brought me to that place, and it was a, a beautiful thing, the way that all happened. But I remember after going there a few months, um, I went to an event, and um, I, I got an intuitive reading from someone, to, I'm some, sure some of you know, Reverend Rick, Rick Freeman. Some of you may remember Reverend Rick. Mm -hmm. Beautiful man. Love him. He's powerful. He's spiritual. He's deep. But I was like, I was really just doing this just because. I didn't expect him to say anything to me. And... What he began to tell me was, you are full. He said, you are full all the way up to your head. And what the Spirit is saying to you through me is that you need to use what is within you. 
you have all of this knowledge, you have all of this wisdom, you have read all of these books, you have all of this experience, and you're not using even an ounce of it. Get out of my face until you start using what I gave you. Mm. And, you know, I wanted to, like, run away. <laughs> like, that's not what I came for. I wanted to hear about, you know, maybe there were, I would enter a new relationship. I wanted to hear about, you know, a new job. I wanted some lotto numbers. I wanted something <laughs> not to tell me that go do some work, right? But I nodded in agreement because I knew it was true. I knew it was true. I had just completed a seven-year journey that was all about preparing me for where I am right now. But I, w I wasn't doing anything. I was just resting on my knowledge. I was a spiritual hoarder. And so I, I took that information in and I said, okay, I, I got to move forward. I got to move forward. And what did that look like? Well, first it looked like um, at Sacred Center, I joined the choir. I had hundreds of songs. I got to use those songs. Hey, Tony, who's the director of the choir, I have a song. It's called Toward Our Wholeness. If you like it, you know, maybe we can sing it. That began the process of using my gift, not just sitting in the pews as a songwriter, as a director, as a producer, a musician, all of those things that I was, but wasn't using it. Eventually that led ultimately to be, be becoming the director of the choir and writing even more music. But still, that wasn't the end of it, right? In that process also came me creating an album and doing my own record, <coughs> something that I had sat on for many, 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 many years. Out of that also came ultimately co-founding Expansion Church, something that I knew was going to happen in my life, but you know, I was a spiritual hoarder, not using what was within me. Nothing new was deposited in me. All of these things mm -hmm. were what I knew was in my path, and I was doing nothing. And eventually that has led me to this place, Celebration Spiritual Center. Because that moment, it was clear to me that I must do. That all that God has put into me from the time, my, my, my dad reminds me of this all the time, from the time I was a little boy, the words that were spoken to me, that I knew, I've always known that this was the work that I would do. I've done other things. I've tried to pretend like I didn't know who I was. I tried to pretend like I didn't know what I know. But, but in truth, I always knew it. And so that beautiful divine moment happened there with Reverend Rick. Rick where I couldn't run anymore, I couldn't hide, and I knew it was time. And so that reminds me of another story in the Bible, a parable that Jesus tells that I'm sure many of us are familiar with. It's a parable of the talents. A talent, a talent is, is money. Um, sometimes people, I'm um, thinking about some of the old church folk, um, would use this to actually talk about physically the word talent. Well, if you don't give God your talent, God's going to take it away. That's not what we're talking about, okay? Talent is money in the, in the case of the story. But it applies nevertheless. And so, if you're not familiar with the story of the talents, Jesus tells the story about a man, a master who has several people that work for him. And he gives them each money. He gives one person five coins or five talents. He gives the next person two and the next person one. And he goes off. Interestingly enough, the person that he gave five talents took that, that money and, and said, okay, let me go and do something with this. He takes the five talents, he invests it, he works with it, he trades, and he ends up with five more. He now has ten. The person with two talents did the same thing. Worked with it, invested it, traded, sold, doubled it. This person now has four. Well, the person with one talent, that person buried it and hit it in the ground for one talent. Now, if you're familiar with the story, when the master comes back, he wants to see, well, what have you done with this money that I've given you? And so the first person, oh, well, I had five, and here, now I have ten. And so we hear these familiar words. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little or a few things. I will set you over much. Enjoy and enter into the joy of your master. The person with two talents who doubled it and has four, same thing. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will set you over much, over many. Enter into the joy of your master. 
But the person with one talent who buried it, this is what he says. Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not winnow. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered, you wicked and slothful servant. Hmm. You knew that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I have not winnowed. Then ought to, ought to have not you invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest? So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. Interesting story. Interesting story. One of the things that's interesting to me is about this, this brother that had one talent. He felt he knew something. And, and, and what's interesting to me is this, um, is that I believe that this is what many of us feel we know about God, about life. I knew that you reap where you do not sow and you gather where you, where you have not spread seed on the ground. This idea that many of us think of God in a certain way. We think of life in a certain way. We say, oh, well, you know, life always takes from me. So I'm not going to give life anything. I'm not going to give anything because I know that I always lose. I always lose out. I have this idea that that's how life works. So I'm going to bury this thing, this talent, this skill, this ability, this knowledge, this thing that I've been equipped with. I'm going to put it to the side because I have a belief about life. That's what was this, this, this brother was expressing here. And what's interesting is the master was saying uh, uh, um, uh, very playfully, like, you knew this about me. If you, you thought you knew this about me, still there's something you could have done based on that knowledge, but you didn't even do that. And what I think is interesting, I think that that is the reason why and how we become hoarders. Because we feel like we have to protect ourselves from something and we have all of this knowledge and information to keep us safe but not to actually do anything with it because we don't believe that life is safe. We don't believe that life is actually can take that which we have and make it even more. I was resting on my knowledge. I found comfort in my knowledge because I thought I knew more than what some other people knew. Right? I had moved out of my traditional Pentecostal upbringing. I wasn't in that world anymore. But I was just wandering aimlessly along in life, not doing anything, not being of service, not being of benefit unto the earth. And so I invite you in this moment to think about for just a minute, just a minute, where are you hoarding in your life, spiritually? What is it that you've been equipped with? And you know, you got it in your pocket. It's with you at all times. But you're hoarding it. And there's someone or something that needs who and what you are. That's what we say here at Celebration. Who you are is who we need. Who you are is what we need. But as we're saying that at Celebration, life is saying that to you every day. There's somebody at your job that's saying that to you whether you know it or not. I always have this thought, this idea about, you know, uh, we are here to love somebody. And if you're here, that means that there's somebody in your life, in your circle and experience that needs the love that you are, the unique love, the unique light that you are. We talked weeks ago about this idea of being a light. You are the light of the world, the city set upon a, a hill. But how often do we hide that light? How often do we hide that light? I'm thinking about Pastor Yolanda and I, we laugh about it sometimes, talking about this idea of light. Because inevitably, when we're truly operating in who we are, when we're being who we are, that light shines. And what happens? Somebody says, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, you're amazing. Oh, your voice is great. Oh, I love you. Oh, and then we start shutting down and saying, oh, oh well, no, oh, uh, we don't know how to accept it. But imagine a light, a lamp in a dark room. You turn the light on and immediately people begin to talk about how beautiful the, oh, the artwork in here is lovely and oh, this carpet is beautiful. And then the light just shuts off because it's scared because people are noticing how beautiful the room is when the point of the light was to illuminate that there is a beautiful room. But how often do we do that in our lives? Our light shines just for that moment where we're being who and what we are 
And then as soon as someone sees it, as soon as someone appreciates it, as soon as someone recognizes it, we shut the light off. But if a, if a real light did that, we would think it was insane. <laughs> so again, I ask you, I invite you to think for a minute, what are you hoarding in your life? You've been equipped. You have the knowledge. You have the books. I see your quotes on Facebook. And even if I don't see them, I know it. Your Instagram and cool pictures. Inspirational ideas. You are the minister that has been called to be ministry on earth. Minister, that word means servant. That's all it means. It doesn't mean spiritual person. It doesn't mean holy man or holy woman. It means servant. We are here to serve, serve all creation. And so if you're hoarding, somewhere in life you're not being ministry. You're not being the minister that you're called to be, the servant. Again, it's not deep. We're not asking you to go to seminary. We're not asking you to get ordained. Minister means to serve with all that you are. I have this other idea. An illustration that I hope will frame this for you. As we're equipped, we're equipped to serve. I have this image of a gift. And one thing about gifts, I, lo I love gifts, not so much receiving gifts, but the thing I love is um, I love gift wrapping. I actually enjoy wrapping gifts. Um, Christmas time is fun for me for that reason. The other thing, and I've been like this since I was a kid, because I appreciate the care that goes into wrapping gifts, I always take, people, my, my sister always gets annoyed with me, I take a lot of time unwrapping the gift. I don't like, I don't just rip open the paper, like I carefully take it open and I want to open it and pull the gift out carefully because I recognize that someone took the time to wrap that gift. It's, it's you know, it was a, that in and of itself, it takes care. You know, and those are the things that really move me. Um, you know, a call on my birthday or just a card is more, you know, more moving for me than, you know, some big lavish party or whatever. I, I, I just appreciate that care that just someone took that little bit of time. And so as I was thinking about a, a rap gift, I thought about us, but that's who and what we are, right? We are gifts, literally. Think of the most beautiful gift wrapping that you can think of, a beautiful bow and all of those things. That's who you are. Now, imagine that gift was given to someone and all it did was just sit on the table. Mm. It's beautiful, the prettiest wrapping paper you could find wrapped by professionals. And it just sits there. And a year goes by and it's still just sitting there. Dust collects on the gift. Another year goes by and it's just sitting there. We can all agree and know that that makes absolutely no sense. That a gift was designed to be opened and utilized and enjoyed and experienced. That was the reason the giver gave the gift in the first freaking place. <laughs> But we, as the gifts on this earth, sit ourselves on the table and collect dust over and over and over again, year in and year out. You're a gift. Open yourself up and allow yourself to be that gift, to be experienced by the earth, to be enjoyed by the earth, to be cherished by the earth, and to put smiles on people's faces, to bring joy to their lives. You've been equipped to serve. And what's interesting about that is that, you know, as we talk about even this idea of having books and all of this stuff and read all of this stuff, but truthfully, you don't even need a book. You were placed here on the earth with everything you need. All the wisdom, all the knowledge, all of the understanding is within you. It's always been within you. We read the books to remind ourselves of that truth that has always been true. We come to church to be reminded of the truth that's always true. I can't tell you anything you don't already know. I'm only here to remind you. That's my job. That's my job, to remind you of what's in you. And I will do that. Sometimes we forget it. Really. But who and what you are, and the gift that you are, it's, it was present at birth. 
Regardless of the circumstances of your birth, regardless of who your mother and father is or isn't or you want it to be or any of that, none of that matters. Everything you have ever needed, you already have. So we use the books. So we listen to the spiritual teachers. So we go to the conferences and the workshops and we subscribe to the mailing list and we are encouraged on Facebook by different posts. Cool. But know that it's only just reminding that thing that's already within you, sparking that thing that's within you. But not enough to just live in that world of hoarding spiritual ideas, but to take that which we have been equipped with to now serve and give to the earth 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 to be ministers. It's the idea that, that really sits at, at, at the foundation of the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy went through an adventure only to find out that what she needed, she always had. She wanted to get back home. That's all she wanted to do. And she was sent here and there and everywhere. And she met different people and had wonderful experiences only to find out Those shoes on your feet will get you home. And you've had them all the time. You've been equipped to serve. And so in this moment, I invite everyone to stand. And I invite you in your mind to imagine that beautiful gift, the most beautiful, immaculate, gift box. It may be a Tiffany's box for some. Whatever your favorite color is, hold that image in your mind and make it as beautiful as you can. Your mind is so powerful, you can put anything on it. You can change the colors at will, you can make it sparkle. beautiful as that gift is, know that that beauty that you are seeing in that gift, in your mind, is re a reflection of the beauty that you are. That gift, that huge, amazing, brilliant, dazzling gift that you see in your heart, in your mind's eye right now, is reflecting all of the beauty, all of the brilliance, all of the dazzling amazingness that you are. And so in this moment, we recognize that not only are we equipped, but we are equipped to serve. We recognize in this moment that there have been times where we chose to just sit on this pile of knowledge, on this pile of books, thinking it was protecting us. There are times when we chose to live life from a place of thinking that who we are wasn't enough. But we forgive ourselves now of that belief. Recognizing that who we are is exactly who and what the world needs. And so we open up ourselves today to be a new demonstration of the love of God in, through, and as us. We open ourselves up today to be a new demonstration of the peace of God as us. We open ourselves up to be a new demonstration of the light of God as us. God, in this moment, I am grateful and thankful for the ministers in this room. Now, the servants here in this room, equipped to serve, designed to serve, designed to be a light, designed to shine, designed to be big in the world, designed to be amazing in the world, designed to be brilliant in the world. In this moment, we release every idea that would lead us to living a small life. In this moment, we release every idea that would lead us to leading a sheltered life. In this moment, we release every idea that would, that would lead us to leave, lead a hidden life. Because we understand what a light is and we understand that we are that light designed to shine. I speak a word of blessing over each and every person here in this room and within the sound of my voice. Knowing that they will take the unique gifts, skills, talents, and abilities that they are, that lives within them, 
and they will use them in the earth. And as they begin to use them, they will hear the words of life saying back to them, Well done, my good and faithful servant. As you have been faithful over those few things, so I will make you ruler of many. For we understand that as we begin to use the gifts, skills, talents, and abilities that we know we have, that we see we have, we begin to discover new gifts, skills, talents, and abilities. As we understand that what is within us must be used, we then find ourselves growing and developing and building new ways of being in the earth. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I make you ruler over many. We choose in this moment to set ourselves up to win. We choose in this moment to live from a place of winning that is spiritual, recognizing that we already have victory, recognizing that we are already victorious based on what you have placed within us. God, I am just so grateful for the souls in this room and the work that will move forth through and as them. I am grateful for the, the lives and the people whose lives will be changed, will be blessed, will be inspired, will be encouraged, will be transformed as these go out and choose to serve all creation. Oh my God. Thank you, God, for these ministers, for these servants. I am excited to see in the world that is created because they are here. I am excited to see the world that is created because they have chosen to serve. And so we release these words. We release these words back into you, knowing that you will bring it forth. You will bring it forth in excellence. You will bring it forth in power. And together we say, Amen. 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 Amen